Hello! In this series of tutorials, I'm going to show you how to use the Digital Planner Cover Creator for Affinity Designer. This is a collection of six uh, digital planner covers. They come with front covers, back covers, and an open layout. And there's also some binder rings and coils that go along with it. So I'm going to do this in a series of videos um, to keep the length from getting too long. So you can just watch what you need to watch um, in order to uh, use these. And I've really designed these tutorials for people who have just a beginning knowledge of Affinity Designer, or maybe none at all. So if you're experienced with Designer, um, you probably don't need these tutorials. Um, these are really designed for people that are newer to designer. So let's get started. So this is cover number one and this is meant to mimic a hardcover style of journal that has the spine here and then there's like a little bend or crease before the rest of the cover. Um, so let me show you how to fill these. You can fill them with a color, with a texture, or with a pattern. So let's look at those three different options. So if you go to the layers window, each one of these artboards is labeled um, so that you can easily figure out what you need to click on. And you don't need to click on the artboard in order to work on it. You can just click on the object. And just as a note, I am working with the move tool right now and I can just click on this object. And filling it with a simple color is as easy as just going to this fill button here. You can use the color wheel to change the color or you can go over to swatches. And in swatches there is a drop down menu where you can do shades of gray, you've got the colors, gradients, and then you have all these Pantone um, palettes that you can go to as well. So um, we can just pick a color here and so I like this sage green so let's go with that. And that's it, that one is filled. So now I'm gonna click the back cover and I'm gonna go back to the fill. And this time I for sure wanna to go to swatches because it's going to have my recently used colors in the recents here. And that way I can get the exact same shade that I picked for the front cover. And then click on the open cover and go to fill and swatches and pick on my same color. And there we have it. We've got these three all filled and they're ready to export. So usually um, the covers are in a JPEG format, but you can do whatever you want. Um, there's file and then you go to export and then you can pick PNG, JPEG, TIFF, Photoshop file, PDF, whatever you would like to export it as. Um, you know, your size is already set. These are in A4, these vertical ones, and then obviously the open ones, a slightly bigger layout. You can choose the quality, and then you can just hit export. All right, so the next thing I want to show you is how to um, fill this with a texture. And so let's go back to this one. I'm going to click on the front cover. And this time I'm going to go over to this tool here. It looks like a colored circle with an arrow coming out of it. And when you hover over it, it says fill tool. So I'm going to click on that. And that changed my menu options up here. So I'm going to do context, fill, type, and then I'm going to use this drop down to select bitmap. So in order to fill with a texture or pattern, you will need to have a texture or pattern already saved in some sort of image file, like a JPEG or PNG. So I have got this leather texture that I downloaded from Pixabay. Now, what I highly recommend is that you have something that's seamless or is a larger size, like a digital paper that's 12 by 12 inches. And you can see the reason for that right here, because if it doesn't fill the entire area, designer is going to tile it. So when you are, um, you can fix this by scaling, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to rotate it because this is kind of a rectangle style texture. And so I'm going to orient that rectangle vertically like the cover is. And then I can pull on these handles to expand it out. And I just want to point out that up here I have this button maintain fill aspect ratio selected and that's going to make things um, go proportional in both the length and width direction um, when you have that on. 
So there we have it filled with leather. And what I was going to say before is you don't want to scale up an image too much because you start to lose resolution. So that's why either starting with a large fill image or using something that's seamless is the best way to go. So let's look at a pattern. So let me switch back to the move tool and then I can select the back cover and I'm going to go back to that same fill tool and again to bitmap and this time I'm just going to choose a pattern. So let's see what this one is. So you can see this one is tiled as well and I also want to point out that in the crease here um, it looks a little um, wonky it doesn't quite match but watch what happens when you just adjust the handles just a little bit even if you didn't want to scale all you need to do is a little tug out and a little tug back in and now this goes across that crease and it stays uh, as one consistent image but because we do need to make this longer I'm sorry bigger I'm going to scale it out and there we have it now we have it filled with this floral pattern and then uh, the final thing I want to point out on this particular layout is most of the open covers have a little bit of a shadow running down the middle and then a crease mark. So those are all editable. So let's go to the open artboard here and I'm just going to click on this arrow to expand everything out. So these have a gradient to create the shadow over here. So you can see these little thumbnails we've got, um, let me put on the move tool so we can see. When I click on this object here, you can see that that selected the left side. When I click on this one, that selected the right side. So right next to the layers, I have my effects. Now if you don't see any of these windows, you can always turn the windows on and off by going to view, down to studio, and then uh, I want to make sure my layers has a check mark next to it and I want to make sure that effects has a check mark next to it and so if you're not seeing some of these windows that I am showing you that's where to look view studio and there's where all your available windows are so in the effects here I have got this selected and right down here there's a little check mark next to gradient overlay now my screencast software has the control buttons right in this lower right corner and so I am not actually able to toggle this on and off and I wasn't able to adjust the window of designer um, to get rid of that problem so just trust me that when you click this arrow on and off that will get rid of that shadow um, along each side and so the same thing this crease here if you don't want the crease you can just click on this selection and turn it off and then it goes away. All right, so uh, the other thing I wanna talk about in this first video is um, the drop shadows. So each of these just has a mild drop shadow on it just to give it a little bit of depth. Um, and so let's look at how you can edit those. So um, I'm going to work on this one since it's kind of in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to expand this out and expand out the group. And I'm going to click on this group, which is basically the cover and the indent, um, indent being this. And I'm going to move over to effects and we've got outer shadow selected. So if I wanted to edit this drop shadow, this is where I can do that. Now we've got some basic controls here, and that's what I'm gonna really just show you, but if you want more options, you can click on the gear, and you will get uh, all of these effects over here, as well as an expanded set of options. So I'm gonna turn the opacity way up so that you can see it better and show you what each of these does. So the radius, um, if you watch the purple pattern one, you can see that we're starting to see a bit of a diffuse shadow all the way around there. So I don't want a lot of that. So I'm just gonna turn that way down. And then I'm going to turn the offset way up. And then you can see here is my drop shadow behind the book. 
And so offset is going to move it further out so that this pops up off the page a little bit more. So again, I'm going to adjust that down a little bit. And then you can use the opacity to make it not as black, to make it uh, a little bit more like a shadow. So that's how you would adjust the drop shadows. If you don't want the drop shadow at all, you just click on that box and that will get rid of it. If you want it back, you just need to select the object and then click on the check mark again. So that is some basics on how you can do some editing of these templates. And uh, in the next video, we'll look at cover number two. I'm not going to go as in depth with the different fill, but I will show you um, some other things specific to planner style number two that you can also edit. Thanks for watching.